What's up, guys? It's James with This Week in Airsoft, and I am back with my man in the UK, our plant in the uh, United Kingdom, Keith Buck. What's going on, Keith? Ah, oh, actually, it's going quite well here. Very cool, man. Well, apart from the fact this week has been bleeding cold. Uh, yeah, I bet. Uh, when is the UK not cold? But it's almost summertime, so it's going to be warming up for you. That'll be good. Yeah, our three days of summer should be scheduled for about the next month and a half sometime. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, <clears throat> so you just came back from Operation Liberator with Sterling Airsoft, man. How was it? Your first Milsim op. Oh, man, I, ha I cannot believe how much fun I had. Um totally made up for the fact that I don't drive, so I had to go travel by public transport. So it, it, it in effect, took me two days to get there. How, but, how, uh, with all of that hassle, like was was it? But it was worth it for you then. Oh hell yes! I'm planning on going back to their next <coughs> Catterick event at the end of May. Are you hooked? Hell yes! <laughs> awesome! Awesome! Although I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to change my loadout for for the next event. What what happened? What did you find? You find some stuff wrong? Well, give me one sec. I pulled out my kit bag just so I could. Uh... All right. Now, this beast is what I normally wear. Right. Which has got effectively the four double mag pouches, my radio pouch, a couple of smoke grenades, and on the back, three litre hydro pack. This thing weighs a bloody ton. Oh yeah. So I think for the next for the next event, I'm going to be buying myself a nice compact chest rig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Just, that's uh, same as me, man. That's how you do it. Just to reduce the weight. Right, right. I mean, don't get me wrong. That thing, um, general skirmish in local fields in winter, is fantastic because it wraps all the way around you. It's nice and thick. It's warm. But the game ran from... Uh, about 11 o'clock to 11 o'clock, maybe a bit longer on the Saturday, so I got the end of Saturday night, and I was shattered. I was completely exhausted. How are your feet feeling? Uh, my feet are feeling good because um, growing up, we've always done um, going up into the Peach District for, for walk, day-long walks, so I've, I've always had a preference for buying hiking boots. Right. And, guys, if you're going to a Milsim event, do not buy a new pair of hiking boots. Because my feet were tired from the end of the, end of the day, and the, the pair of hiking boots I've got are well worn in. But no pain. So, uh, there was a slight bit of pain, but that was from a, the, the callus on the back of one of my heels had peeled off during that week. Uh. Okay. <laughs> so that rubbed a bit, but that that's a com yeah, you know, that's a complete side issue from actual from the actual boots. Um, the other thing I found was now I I was started out the day carrying eleven mid caps. No. <laughs> Too many? Not enough? What? <sighs> Uh, at one point, I had four empty mid caps in my dump pouch, and one of those was because the um, the follower had twisted and the mag wasn't working. Right. So to get it working again, I had to take the spring out, chuck the BBs over the side of the, over the wall, and reassemble the mag, put it in the dump pouch. Once I figured out what was wrong with it, so I think the most I went through was like three and a half mags okay yeah that sounds about right that's that, that's normally my my uh percep my perce i mean it, with, with those kind of games where you where it's not continuous and you stop you don't need to carry like i used to carry 12 mags in a game 
and uh, it's not necessary. Like six tops would be good for you and a couple buddy mags because I mean that's you know I, I I've never had to run through more than six mags in a day. Um, a continuous game might be different, but even in a continuous game, you're going to carry you know maybe a small bag of ammo with you, you know, and then and then that's it. So you know yeah. you get another 500 rounds and you're good. You know that'll get you through. Well, the great thing about them. At this event, there were, no, there were no medic rules in effect. So, but the site's compact enough. You can actually walk from one end, of the, one end to the other of it in less than 10 minutes. So the way they had it organized is at either end of the site, you had Regen 1, which was also the safe zone. The other end of the site, you had Regen 2. Now, the Regens were open for the opposing teams for 10 minutes. Then they were closed for five, then open for the other team for 10 minutes. Oh, okay. And that worked really well because you, you were never quite sure where the bulk of the enemy was going to come from. And it combined with them, um, there was a, I got the, the, uh, the, the briefing sheet here, which includes the map and on the back, the objectives list. And because there's a objectives you have to hold throughout the day. So every player had a list of the had a list of the objectives. Yeah. That's cool. That's something that they don't do in the US, which I, I hate because the common infantryman, you know, the guy who's not a squad leader or not a platoon leader has no idea what's going on or what you're supposed to be doing or what the objectives are or, you know, I mean there's so many times in a game an objective will walk right by you, and you'll just be like, oh, there is another civilian, you know what I mean? And he's one of the objectives you need to capture him, you know what I mean? So that's pretty cool. I like that. The way they, the way they worked it was that there were about 80 people in, in attendance at this event, so it was, and it was split pretty, even, pretty evenly um, across the two sides. Command for each of the two sides was provided by Sterling. Then, based from because I was on the SOTF side, we were split down into squads about eight, ten men strong. And the squad leader was issued a radio by Sterling. Oh, okay. Now, how many squads were there? Um, we had squads five one, five two, five three, which I was on a. Five four, and I believe there were a few guys left over that command call sign five zero kept with him. So um, four and a bit ish squads. Okay. Um, how the other side was was organised, I can't say. Right, right, right. Um. There were a couple of times over, over the course of especially Saturday when I lost contact with my squad. Uh, head back to regen. I hit the regen just wrong. I have the 20-minute wait. And then um, the rest of the squad have then moved on to a different objective and they've been going to the other regen. Ah, uh, okay, okay. It uh, wasn't that big of an issue really because of the size of the site. Um, but yeah, we say um, command would issue ob um, squad objectives. And usually, there were two objectives on the go at any one time, with a couple of squads assigned to the squad commanders, and then we would have to coordinate ourselves getting to and actually taking the objective. <coughs> Uh, I have to say, I I really, really enjoyed the teamwork. Um, okay, there, there were a couple of times when you know, you're sat on an objective and it doesn't seem like anything's going on. Right. But from listening to the show and from watching various YouTube channels, I knew that there were going to be times over the day when 
you sat on your ass, bored out of your skull. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden, there's a hail of BBs coming in at you. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then contact. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there is actually one story. We're defending um, one of the. Okay. We're defending one of the objectives. I think we're. Yeah, building 27. I think we were, I was in. And around the back end of the site, one, end, one side of the site, there's a dirt track, which you can't see down because it rises up over a hill. And you, just as you get to the top of the dirt track is when people come into sight, into sight of, the, of the window I was studying. And some of the opposition were coming up that track. And they were obviously a little bored. So they walked up, and as they came into the line of sight, they saw us defending the building, and they literally went, Yoo-hoo, guys! <laughs> <laughs> At which point, we opened fire. <laughs> which I, I just loved, the fact that people were enjoying themselves enough to do that. That's good, man. Um, I mean, I... We did kind of stomp the opposition over the course of the weekend. Because <laughs> I asked just before I left and um, my command what the final score was. KOA, 35 points. SOTF, 205. Wow, jeez. <laughs> what, did, what, did what did SOTF stand for? I forgot to ask. <laughs> All right, well, um, so what would you do different? Um, we've talked about mags and probably a chess rig. Um, what would you, besides those things, what would you do different? What did you walk into not realizing, and what did you learn from this first-time event for you? More food. More food? Okay. Yeah. Like what, um, granola bars, MREs, stuff, stuff no, you can not carry? No, that. Um... Here in the, well, for keeping the energy levels up during the day while you're actually out in the field, here in the UK, we've got a product called Kendall Mint Cake. Okay. Now, the best way to describe this is it's a white block of warp power grade sugar flavored with mint. You, you eat a block of this and you're running Olympic speeds for 40 minutes and then you hit a wall as, you, as the sugar fades. <laughs> I don't know if that's where you want to be. <laughs> yeah, oh, but for a quick, a quick energy boost, there's nothing better. Romney's Kindle Mint Cake, is that it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I got <It's> it. <laughs> a brick of hyper sugar flavored with mint. Nice. Um, but yeah, uh, things like that and stuff to keep suck on to keep your um, mouth and throat wo moist. I didn't have a problem with. Uh, the issue I had was I didn't actually take enough food to cook. Um, if you wanted to eat, you had to go back to the safe zone and actually cook your your own food. But, I mean, there are were are takeaways you could order from, but. And you've got to wait for it to turn up. Right. I try, I, I had a hot breakfast. Then I had lunch. It was, I think it was about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Then I went all the way through to the end of game before I had anything, anything more substantial to eat. So getting towards the end of the game, I was getting cold. I was getting tired. And I was getting damned hungry so I think next time I'd take an extra meal so I could eat 7, 8 o'clock-ish in the evening and then have something to eat after we're done right, right you, before, you need that energy yeah, right before crashing out for the night right, what kind of stuff can you cook there like, a, like, or, like, like is when you say cook, um, um, like you can't, obviously you can't cook in the in the accommodation blocks. You have to go outside to cook. But basically, you take a stove and we'll take whatever food you like. Okay. Okay. Um, and the guys I the guys I was sharing a room with, uh, dirty rotten terrorists, all three of them. <laughs> um, 
they clean things like cans of beans and sausage for breakfast. They had cans of chili for their dinner. Um, I think I ran into them when I was having lunch. I think they were cooking up some, you know, heat up some soup. Cause they brought soup and bread. Okay. So I'll have a quick think about what I'm, what I want to take with me. Okay. Cool. Um, what else? Anything else? Um, let me think. How was your weapon? Damn. I was popping guys a hundred feet away. Nice. Uh, once I got it, managed to get it dialed in with the hop and uh, get the scope zeroed. Because I did make the mistake of buying a new scope. But I turned. I was there early on the Friday, so I was able to get the, my scope zeroed while it was still daylight. Um, so that that was all right. The Masada is a bit of the PTS Masada is a bit of a weighty beast. So if I had a lighter primary, I might take that. Um, simply because I say it's a bit heavy and it's front heavy, but. Overall, it wasn't too bad. Um, I will, I will say this for the guys who were sh uh, sharing room with me. I am now really looking forward to the new um, gas blowback PTS Masada because it's using the LM4 engine. Right. And those three guys are running LM4s all weekend. How are they? The other way, having fun with them, huh? As they were. Didn't seem to have a single problem with him, even during the night when it during the night portion of Saturday when it got cold. Right. Um, I will say this for command. I, I'm not sure if it was deliberate or not, but command seemed to pull a really dirty trick on the opposition Saturday night. As my squad was defending one of the built one of the buildings that was our objective, and we were keeping all nice and quiet and sneaky. And it seemed like the dis command decided to actively defend the next building down, which wasn't an objective. <laughs> so I was n I was kneeling beside this window, which you could step through, and I was constantly seeing the enemy walking past, heading for the firefight. I was thinking, "Oh Christ! If they look over here, this window is huge. I'm going to have trouble keeping it out of their f out of their line of fire." And then they're all going to pile in. Cause it was literally like a double window. Mm -hmm. Sill was knee height at most. Huh. So that was one of the points where that was the point, kind of the point where I was getting really cold and hungry. But it was, and it was kind of getting stressful because walked watching the enemy walking past, or walking up into where I had a line of sight on them, but obviously they couldn't, they weren't looking at me, and they hear the fight and realize it's the next building down, and start running into the engagement, and then walking back towards regen. Because <laughs> that's the other thing about the site, there are street lights out, but there's no lighting in the buildings. Oh, that's good. If you're so, in the buildings, that works in your favor big time. Yeah. Um, but at the, same, at the same time, if you've got someone who's moving from one, one doorway or to a window or from a, one doorway to the other, and they're flashing the white light on and oh, off sure, so yeah. they can see where they're going, and you're trying to keep an eye out the window, and you realize this light's going to backlight like you like, like a supernova because it's dark. It, that starts to get a little worrying. Um, plus, at various times we had to find, over the day, we had to find laptops and get them to extraction points. 
And one of them was hidden inside the hotel, which is a long, long string of rooms under a stairway, and we missed it. Uh. So we didn't get the points for that. You didn't get to overkill the other team. <laughs> 235 <laughs> points, 35 points or whatever. Uh, I think you survived. Our, 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 you made out all right. <laughs> That's yeah. good, though, man. That sounds like an awesome time. So so w you give uh, Sterling Airsoft uh, five out of five stars? Yeah, uh, especially for first time. Because I... The atmosphere, the atmosphere over the weekend from the players and the staff was absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, you could, if you're walking back to Regen, you see the enemy team coming out the other way, or going the other, or if you're walk, going out of Regen and seeing the enemy team coming in, occasionally have a bit of a laugh and a joke with them. Right. Um, and people were taking their hits without without query or quibble. Um, I mean, there were a couple of times I'm not sure I wasn't sure if it was a if the BB that hit me was um, a ricochet or something. Right. But I can't be sure, so hit. Yeah, you just call it. No big deal. Yeah. Yeah. And like I say, the sights. You're five minutes walk from one of the two regions at most. If you hit it just wrong, you know, just as it's closing for your team, you've got twenty a twenty minute wait till it opens again. You sit down and have a drink. So it's not too long a wait till you're back in the action. And you know, while you're sat there waiting and you're seeing the same guy running out of regen going down the same route every time and he's back in three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and even the staff aren't, aren't afraid to take the mick out of him. <laughs> So you so had a... It, a fantastic time. Like yeah. I'm pretty sure I'm going back to their event at Catterick um, last weekend in May, I think it is. But before I do that, um, I'm definitely going to look into getting myself... I've already started looking at, at chest rigs. And I think I'm going to go with the, the Haley Strategic Disruptive Environment. Yeah, that's a great one. That's... Uh, I've. That's that's a great chess rig. Um, the reason I'm think I'm really looking at that is that it you can clip it in to the um, the tactical Taylor removable operator pack. Yeah. Which I saw a couple of guys using over the weekend, and they're nice and slim and small, so I'll be able to run that and keep a fleece in it for when the temperature drops. Right, right, right. Did you see? Uh, I don't know if you saw uh, what's his name. Spartan one one seven GW. He has a video where he's running that tactical that uh, D three chess rig, the heavy version. Yeah. It, it basically the same kind of frame, but he's running it clipped into a backpack too. Um, yeah. Yeah. With yeah, a, that's a, one of the re one of the reasons why I I started looking specifically at that one because I like the versatility. You can run it as a standalone chest rig, or you can clip the pack to it, and you've not got a load of extra straps. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you right now, you may have to get a set of these. It's a, it's called a Quasm or Quasm connector. I bought one because I got a, I ordered a Haley, Haley chess rig. And, uh, this thing costs $7.95 US for a pair. Um, so getting one shouldn't be any problem. But the cool thing about this guy is, if you can see here, I don't know if you can tell. Yeah. See, see how that's split? So you slide this into your Molly, and then you just... You just tuck it in like that, and then that closes up, and then you got, you just position these so you can clip your chest rig right into it, you know, and that way yeah, you can any, anything with Molly, carrier. yeah, anything yeah. with Molly, front of a plate carrier or whatever. These these things are great. Um, Seven dollars and ninety five cents. Uh, the name of the company, I can't remember, <laughs> but uh, if you really want to know, you just email me. I'll give you the name of the company. Very, very cool, um, Quasm Connectors or something like that. They're called. Uh, if you need it, but um, that's awesome, man. I'm glad you had a good time. I'm glad you've got you've rethunk your gear. You you learned some lessons. You've had some takeaways. That's awesome. Um, I do I do have one thing. Sure. One thing. It's kind of a, a mini product review. Yeah. Now before the event, I spotted that Bolay introduced a new coating on 
their line of eye protection. Um, they call it the platinum coating. So I picked up these. It's a pair of Bole Cobras. Fairly cheap. I think it cost me just under 20 quid um, delivered. Okay. These things did not fog all weekend. Wow. I mean, that, I mean, after after lunch, and I'd had these off my head for about half an hour, maybe 40 minutes. I put them on within a couple of minutes. There was a very, very slight bit of fogging, and then it was gone within five minutes. But these things did not actually fog on me at all. Now, I'm not sure whether or not they'd be allowed in Milsim over in the US, because I've looked, and they're not um, ANSI Z871 oh, rated. Yeah. Yeah, okay. But I looked at them and they these are these are rated for a 0.86 gram 6 millimeter extreme temperature ball hitting them at 120 meters a second. Mm. That works out at a 0.86 gram 6 mil ball hitting them at almost 400 feet per second. That's enough. Right, right, yeah. And I, they're planning, from what I can understand, rolling the that platinum coating out across the range. So it may be worth people keeping an eye out. Because these, these were comfortable. And apart, they didn't fog, but what got, I got was um, like horizontal lines of moisture. Right. So there was a slight visual distortion in places occasionally. But all you had to do was alter the angle of your head ever so slightly. So, so uh, when you say platinum coating, was it like a new lens you put on it, or was it like a no, spray? It's an actual, no, it's an actual, an actual factory applied coating that's on both the out, the, on the lens. Oh wow! Okay, okay, okay. So I haven't, like... I haven't put any anti fog on these at all. Wow! I've okay. literally just bought them, unpacked them, adjusted the strap, and worn them. Very cool. And that's those are called the uh, Bole Cobras. Yeah. B O L L E. Yes, yeah, the um... Bole. There we go. Okay. Yeah. All right, worth it. Worth a check, guys. Bole Cobras. But you want, you know, for the U.S. guys, you want to make sure that you uh, uh, make sure that you know they're allowed by the uh, game producers, or they're yeah. uh, you know uh, I know some guys have different rules. It's, something it... to keep an eye on though is that. Um... I had to look for these specifically with the platinum coating because they're still selling off stock of the old one of the older versions without the platinum coating. Okay, so you had to make sure you found you had to definitely look specifically for platinum coating. Yeah. Bole Cobra platinum coating. Excellent. Yeah, I'll like say the the platinum coating they're rolling out that's specifically designed for anti fog works. Okay, excellent. Very cool, very cool. All right, all right, man. Um, well, I appreciate you coming on and talking to us about your first game, and we look forward to hearing more from you as uh, as a as your uh, year goes on and you get to play a few play, play more uh, Sterling Airsoft games. Well, I'm um, like I said, I'm planning on going back to Catrick at the end of May, um, and I'm I'm waiting to see when they actually get the dates for their game at Cope Hill Down. Because Cope Hill Down is a training ground that I think it's down south. And the site itself is a Bavarian village. Oh, cool. And it's, it looks like there's a couple of hundred buildings. Wow. And I was, I was talking to the the actual staff at the after the event was over. <clears throat> the events they run at Catterick are more combat oriented because the, the site's nice and small and compact and they, keep, they can keep the action going. Events they run at uh, Stanta and Cope Hill Down are more role play events where they will actually have Civ Pop in place for you, inter for you to interact with. Right. And I, I, I would really like to try out one of those events. Nice. That's very cool, man. 
unfortunately, the Stanta one is coming up very shortly, and I can't afford to go to that one. So I'm keeping my eyes open for the Cope Hill Down. Okay. Well, keep us in the loop, man. We'd love to know more about it. That's I, I will uh, do. Yeah, Sterling is... Just, we've been watching Sterling for a long time, and they have very good games, and they seem like they have a good handle on the Milsim environment and know how to do some really cool stuff, so we definitely want to hear more about what they're doing. One last thing to mention sure, is... Yeah. Um, while I was at this event, I did see tag rounds in use. Ah, oh, nice. Damn, but they are useful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. They're definitely useful. Yeah, I, would, I think there's only a couple of guys using them, but when they were used, they did make a difference. Yeah. Yeah, those things, you lob them out there, and they, they blow up, and you know, you got a, like a BB shower coming out. You can't beat that for you know. Can't beat that with a stick. That's great. Those things are awesome. Absolutely awesome. All right. So, uh, Keith, thank you very much for coming on, man. I really appreciate having you yep. as usual. Uh, to spend some time with us. It's uh, what time is it over there? Uh, it's just gone half seven. Okay, so it's seven o'clock there. It's three thirty-eight here. So, <laughs> really appreciate you uh, getting making time for us. Um, <clears throat> guys, as always, this week in Airsoft is brought to you by Ron, R Romney's Kindle Mint Cake. <laughs> um, <clears throat> a a sugar-filled boost to your uh, Milsim adventure. <laughs> um, Just don't buy the stuff with chocolate on it. Yeah, there you go. Exactly. That's too much sugar. <laughs> um, all right. Actually, this week in Airsoft is brought to you by Audible.com. So, guys, if you want to get a free audiobook you, for a uh, free audiobook and a 30-day trial membership at Audible.com, uh, it's audibletrial.com/airsoft. So, go check it out, guys. It helps out the show, and Audible's very awesome. I am a huge Audible fan, and uh, thank you. All right, Keith, it's a pleasure, sir, and we will see you next time. Indeed. All right. Later, people. Later.